This is the June 2013 update for my dual Optron box. Nothing's really changed. Still got my 12 gigs of RAM, my two dual Opterons. Uh, all the hard drives are the same except for this one. This is not the 80 gig from the other video. This is a 250 gig that I had to replace a coil on from, I guess, an identical 250 gig of the same kind. It's a Seagate uh, 7200.9. I think, and I'm using that for scratch and for swap, and that's on the secondary IDE channel with this white cable right here. Uh, I do have to switch that cable out as well as one of these SATA cables over here. Probably not going to be the same color. Uh, one of these, I think it's this one right here. Uh, this and this, they're both Seagates. They're both giving me a little bit of a problem where they're giving... Here, I'll, I'll uh, show you over here. Uh, this is the Western Digital. Uh, here we go. <clears throat> the read error rate is quite up there. And the seek error rate is right up there. <clears throat> that's a problem for me. So if the next one is... No, that's, uh, here's the other one. Same thing. Read error is right up there. Seek error is way up there. So that's probably telling me that I have a bad cable on both of them. But it could also be uh, just something that happens with Seagate drives. I don't know. Uh, I'm hoping not. That end of the second uh, Opteron is running, on average, it runs about 10 degrees hotter than the other Opteron. So this Opteron right here is running 10 degrees hotter. People have said, oh, why are you doing that? You have uh, it getting air from the other one. Since the last video that I've taken of this, I have switched it back around because in the other direction that it was facing, it was not really performing as I thought it would be. I am probably going to have to take the heatsink back off and repaste again because I think I messed it up a little bit. That might have added to a little bit of the problem, but what I really should be seeing is generally not even more than five degrees hotter on most uh, in most cases especially since I have like three uh, fans over there just expelling air out of the out of the premises of those two heat sinks uh, still haven't gotten any MOSFET heat sinks for uh, either of the two MOSFET blocks there for either of the two CPUs working on that still uh, again all the hard drives are the same I said I was probably gonna have a couple uh, two or three terabyte drives by uh, this time uh, this year, but that didn't happen. <laughs> uh, it's a little dusty in some spots. Uh, I had a TV tuner card in here at one point. I replaced it with this USB 2 card for more USB ports. Uh, wireless card still the same. Athros uh, Air 5007G. That's 802.11G. I don't think it's MIMO. Um, considering getting a decent uh, 300 meg uh, and card or NMEMO up to like I think it's four or 600 meg you can get now see what I can find for cheap on eBay or something or I'll see about getting one of those mini PCI cards off of uh, Newegg and just getting an adapter and dropping it in there it'll uh, give me a little bit more of a choice for a couple things I think uh, the two uh, uh, Cougar fans are still over there uh, the Ultra K's up here is still doing okay. The Scythe Ultra K's up here, still doing all right. So, uh, oh, my neck. There we go. Still doing all right. Got the case is still doing all right. I've got a wireless dongle up there for uh, my mouse. Not much in terms of uh, any real, uh, just general. Yeah, what would what, you call it? Just no real progress. Just moved the heat sink around. I've been running it uh, as is. Um, I did a cleaning of this machine up about a month ago. Removed uh, quite some uh, dust bunnies from underneath the, where the power supply sits and in the front. That's why it looks pretty clean now. Uh, I just went and I uh, used a one of those uh, lint-free cloths and just uh, 
did a quick wipe down of a couple places, like at, on top of the hard drives and stuff, because there's no there's no PCB under here from like the middle of the drive on for most of these, actually all of them. So I was able to just get some of the dust off the top of them, because uh, I am going to be taking a picture of this for uh, for stuff, just because I take a picture of uh, the inside of my computer every so often for uh, my own purposes and stuff. Just so I have a picture for, oh, this is how I used to have it, yada yada. And I've done that on, on occasion. Actually, I've linked people to the video that I made of the last one of this quite often. So, the to-do list is figure out which one of these set of cables goes to this Seagate hard drive. Remo replace that 80 pin of the, no, the, not 80 pin. Uh, but re replace that um, IDE cable with a better 80 conductor cable for the 250 and also some other stuff. The other thing I want to point out is I do have a fan right there, although you can't really see it. I don't have my handy dandy light so it can be a hand here right now, but right in there I've got a, got a little uh, fan on the chipset here. And there was quite some dust that's already built up. Just getting a whole lot quieter. I've actually got to replace that with something a little better. What I really want to do is replace that entire chipset heatsink, but I can't because of well clearance constraints with the 550 Ti's heatsink. And I don't know if I'm ready to void my warranty by replacing the heatsink altogether with something that's going to do a little better for me. Oh, look at that, it started raining outside, woohoo. Uh, cleaned up the cables just a little bit. Uh, although you can't really see that too well. I'm working on it. And I think that's about it. I'm also playing around with ideas for getting this piece, this cable right here. And I'm going to see about going above, above the, the card and down. That's something that I'm considering but that would get in the way because I have the heat sink there and it would have to go over the heat sink in order to go under and down. So the other option would be uh, to zip tie it across so this piece of plastic here from the, uh, the fan shroud because there's, there's just enough here for the um, for there to be a zip tie going across. Go down, go down here and go around and just zip tie it around. That would be the other option. But just to get it out of the way here, because uh, even though it's not too much of a dust magnet, it does make the case look a little too, uh, I guess, crowded, you'd say. So that's on the to-do list as well. Just not too, uh, not too worried about it at this point in time. I think the other thing to put on the to-do list would be uh, the fan up here. I think I might want to... Uh, drop it up to 6 volts. It's on 5 right now. I think. I forget if I put it on 5 or 7. But I want to drop it up, up to 6 volts. So I'm either going to do that with um, 12 volt step down. In fact, I think that's what I'm going to do. Just do a 12 volt step down to 6 volts. But that's again something for the future that's not a priority at this point. And I guess the other thing that I would need to do is again find a use for the PCIe X4 slot there under the 550Ti. Something I've been playing around with the idea of is getting a better card to drop in here. Do some benchmarks, see if there's any sort of a bottleneck because there is DDR RAM in here, there is uh, the two Opterons that deal with one deals with four sticks of two, and the other one deals with two sticks of two. So there's four gigs on one, and uh, there is eight gigs on the other. And I'm trying to figure out if there's any sort of bottleneck. I know right now there's no bottleneck with the 550 Ti, which is a good thing. Uh, 550 Ti, you could pretty much uh, put in terms of performance of it like a GTX 460 or so. But I don't want to go down to the 4 series. I want to stay with 5 series or up. Or probably move over to AMD. At least that's the idea here. Uh, 
Oh man, I have uh, one bag of Starbucks Chibi Bun left, and I'm like using it very sparingly because they don't put it out that um, that quickly. Uh, they put it out at the beginning of like January up until like April or something, or February to April, and that's it. So I'm uh, probably gonna have to order some on eBay or something and hope that it's not uh, knock off. <laughs> Alright, so I guess that concludes this uh, little update. Not much to say. Uh, I am going to investigate some possible better fans. Like in the back there, I've got the stock fan that came with the Inman case that I have here. Again, for anybody not knowing, it's a Mana 134. I'm probably going to see about uh, replacing that fan in the back there with something a little better. If I can find something. It's probably not going to be PWM because... Uh, I just don't have a use for a PWM fan there. It just needs to push a set amount of air properly, and that's it. We have a sort of same system going out with my brother's machine. He just uh, spent 500 bucks on uh, an FX8354 gigahertz, Hyper 212 Plus, 16 gigs of Mushkin, 88824. Uh, yeah, D yeah, DDR3 1600 888 Um, there was also a Biostar TA970 motherboard. I'm not too happy with Biostar, but this one seems to be okay. And, one, two, three, four. What was the last thing that he got? Uh, oh yeah, he also got a Corsair, like, TX500 or something, power supply. And, or AX500 or something like that. Because it was on sale for, like, shoot 35 bucks so he got all that we assembled it it works fine it does what he needs it to do we're working on finding the bracket for his 5570 but that but currently he's using my uh, 8800 GTS we pretty much call that it's maiden voyage because that one had its problems uh, I originally bought that for 20 bucks off eBay it was having artifacting and stuff so I'm hoping that the thermal compound issue uh, it is not an issue or it does not create issues and it does not go back to artifacting on them so far I've turned up the fan to 80% you can barely hear the damn thing it's great and it stays pretty cool uh, around 50 degrees Celsius range so uh, I'd say it's a success at this point and we suck it into a uh, junky old case I'll uh, give you a link in the, in the uh, description to a picture of it posted uh by uh, Pomp.se, which is uh, a good friend, uh, Neku Neku's uh, little hosting site that he started. So we'll get to that a little later. And I guess I'll also post a picture of uh, this in there. Maybe not, because I already have a video of it here. So I'll just post a picture of my brother's box that we built, and uh, we'll have fun with that. Now we have the same Oh, yeah, and... Uh, we put a Nidic uh, Beta V, I think. No, 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 no. It was an NMB Matsushita fan. We put that on his um, Hyper 212 in pull, and it just sucks air through that thing. And with Cool and Quiet and C1E instructions on and enabled, that thing runs so cold. Uh, the thermal diodes for each of the cores uh, says 16 degrees Celsius in. Uh, uh, around uh, uh, ambient of 22 degrees Celsius in the room and that's with the fan on low I doubt that's the actual real temperature unless the metal is that good at unless the, the entire cooling system is that good at doing and just uh, just removing heat from the entire pro uh, program there but oh my god I would say that it's really idling someplace around like six or seven degrees higher. I'm not too trusting of those uh, uh, thermals uh, that's reading off, so we'll see what happens with that. I'll see if that's really the case or if uh, something's going a little awry with the thermal sensing for uh, the FX cores still. Either way, uh, that ends this video for now. Uh, Drop down, leave a comment if you have it. Maybe if you have any. <laughs> I mean, I could really use some comments, I guess. Suggestions. 
anything that I should be looking into for this particular build, go for it. Until next time.